Hi, welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about my honest opinion on what CS degrees are really for and whether you should take it. So some background about myself, um, I recently graduated from Brown University with a science bachelor's in computer science and um, I'm going to be an incoming software engineer at Roblox. CS has, you know, in the past decade become probably the most popular uh, major that students choose over the nation probably internationally as well. There's really the need to talk about, you know, whether you should take CS because um, I don't know if they did any surveys on this, but at least from my experience at Brown, a lot of my uh, fellow classmates in my CS courses, they kind of hated CS. Um, you know, they hated the projects, they hated coding, um, they hated debugging. Um, in a sense, they hated everything about CS. And I think the logical next question is then why are you learning it right why would you make your you know college life you know your four years of your life kind of like in such pain and misery and usually they'd come back with that answer of you know i want to become a software engineer or, or sometimes you got the my parents said i have to learn a stem field they won't they forced me or and i think it's no secret that you know software engineers get paid pretty well. Um, you know, you get new grads earning easily over, you know, 150,000, 200K. And you know, that, that pay is just very competitive considering the only other kind of probably uh, new grad position that's higher is like quant traders and quant analysts um, at hedge funds. And then there's investment banking, but their pay is kind of, you know, really based on bonus and the kind of general market trends. And also, you know, the work-life balance is absolutely horrendous. So you, you, you basically trade your life um, for the next five to 10 years um, for compensation. But for most software engineers, you know, at most companies, that's not the case. Like, uh, it's a pretty good work-life balance. Uh, you don't do that much overtime. You know, maybe like the work is hard, but you know, I'd say like 70, 80% of the time, you're it's okay, like it's a pretty decent kind of job considering how much money they're paying you, especially straight out of college. And I guess the next question would be, okay, so, so what? Um, I hate it, but you know, I, you know, put myself through four years of pain um, and growth and you know, I get a good paying job. And, uh, you know, I work for a few years until I retire, but that is just not the case. The truth is, and kind of what we've seen in this economy, uh, CS isn't, you know, the key to wealth, right? It's a key to wealth, but it really depends on the person. If you really hate CS, you're going to find it really hard to compete when, you know, all the big tech companies are having layoffs and there's just a few positions left for, you know, thousands of graduates across the nation. So this year, what we're seeing is you know, even at top universities, you know, students aren't getting jobs. So now, you know, there's all these, you know, sentiment online videos going viral about how CS is dead. You know, the memes of, of you know, the homeless people on the streets are recent uh, CS students. And that's really the case because, you know, there aren't enough positions for the amount of graduates that are coming out, especially when COVID hit and all the big tech companies decided that they're going to hire tons of people. But that trend didn't continue after COVID restrictions relaxed and everyone kind of just went back offline. I think when you want to choose CS, it's kind of like the go-to thing. If you don't know what to do, you're just going to, you should just learn CS, right? Because it's stable, you get a good job, and um, people are kind of just rushing to it like mods to a flame. But really, I think people should be a little more rational about it. Like if you don't really like the concept of, you know, technical problem solving or coding or, you know, like debugging, all, all this technical stuff, because that's really all there is. I, I think Hollywood really uh, romanticized hacking and coding, um, but really it's kind of just you um, with a keyboard looking at a screen and, and solving problems line by line, um, you know, and looking back, you know, talking with your team and then reiterating. I think the path of thinking that people should kind of take is similar to, you know, choosing to be a doctor or, or a lawyer, right? Like, it should be something you're passionate about. Like, I, I think most medical students, um, 
okay, I, I guess there are some exceptions, but most of them, they genuinely want to become a doctor because I think purely for the pay, I mean, yes, doctors earn a lot of money after, you know, when they become a doctor, but, you know, the, the, the intense, like up to like 10 plus years of, of medical school and, and residency combined, you're going to be 30 something until you become a doctor. And I think most pre-med students know this better than me. Um, so really when they're choosing this path, I'm, I'm sure most of them genuinely want to become a doctor. And, and for lawyers as well, you're going to have to go through law school, you're going to have to take the bar, you know, um, and then you're going to have to become, you know, associate and then start rising up the ranks within a law firm. And, and that's going to take a long time until potentially you could become like a relatively senior position, like a partner, right? I think most people joining this, they're not saying like, oh, I want to be a lawyer because I want to be rich, right? They're doing it because they enjoy the concept of law and, and they want to practice law. At least it's something that interests them. But I feel like this isn't really the case for CS because you know, CS has these huge classes and especially at Brown, we do a lot of group work and so my teammates, they're just always like, oh, like, you, oh, CS sucks. Like, I, I can't wait to finish this class. Uh, you know, or, um, you know, I'm taking uh, two CS classes this semester, I'm gonna die. Like that, that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, you should be happy that you're taking CS. It's not some sort of like, you know, no pain, no gain situation that you have when you're working out, right? It's, it's you know, you should choose something you're passionate about in college. I think CS is one of those uh, majors where it's like, you know, when you get a project or assignment, right? If you kind of click and kind of just know what to do, like you'll finish it in a few hours or maybe even like, like a, a few minutes, right? Some projects, college are not gonna like tell you to make something from scratch they're gonna give you kind of like a stencil and then you just kind of figure out what to put in um, to make it work so sometimes it's just like a few lines of code but it's really hard but if you just suddenly get it then you can finish like a weekly or like a monthly homework in like one hour right but there's also the case where it's like a weekly assignment that's supposed to take like five hours but you're stuck and there's a bug you can't find out why. And then you end up using like 40 hours and you still can't find the bug and then you're kind of like. The idea of taking another CS course is making you sad. Then I think you should consider, you know, maybe just taking a few CS courses and, and choosing something you're actually passionate about. Stuck, right? And, and you're gonna be unhappy. Right? No one wants to get stuck, you know, working on something for, for, for you know, days. and no progress at all. But that's kind of the case with CS, and that's not usually the case with other subjects, right? In the end, right, people are usually, kind of the majority of people, are learning CS to become a software engineer. And essentially, that means you gotta go through recruiting. And if you don't have the passion um, for the projects and, and kind of, you know, for the field in general, you're not gonna perform well in your interviews. You're gonna be lying about, you know, why you're passionate or like what your interests are. and. Unless you're a really good actor or actress, right, you're not going to pass these interviews because tech interviews are notoriously kind of long-winded with many, many rounds, just like investment banking or consulting interviews. So, for example, when I was doing recruiting, it's very normal for a company to have like four, five, even six rounds of interviews. And if you hate the subject so much, you're not gonna, you know, enjoy yourself when you're recruiting and you're applying to you know, dozens of companies or even hundreds of companies, right? Especially in this industry. You're not gonna enjoy networking with, you know, other tech recruiters. You're not gonna enjoy doing the projects. You're not gonna enjoy lead code. I guess, like, not everyone enjoys lead code, but generally, uh, at least for recruiting purposes, for new grads, you should, and you definitely need to perform well on lead code to, you know, even step inside the door of recruiting. So my genuine kind of advice for anyone who's, you know, deciding what to declare for their major or, you know, just entering college is really, you should always try to follow your passion. Like never just do something because of the prospect of earning a lot of money, right? You wouldn't, you know, just buy lottery tickets every day because there's the prospect of winning jackpot, right? Then why would you do that for CS? when you have no passion for the subject. And I know I might get some hate for, you know, thinking about choosing CS like this. And it's not like CS is a, 
exclusive club or anything, but it's quite technical. It's a pretty specialized field. And, you know, I always think about, you know, CS as kind of digital, you know, construction workers, right? Like, you're building something, you're, you're, you're an engineer, you're, you're crafting something. And that means you have to produce results. You know, there's other options as well if you want to enter the tech industry, right? Like, you know, you can do more econ classes or management-based classes, you know, and try to enter the product management sphere, right? Or you maybe you can, if you like the tech industry, um, you know, you can try to go in from the business side, right? Um, I know at my company, you know, there's MBA interns, you know, that enters into management, um, you know, like more uh, kind of logistical management rules. There's really a lot more to the tech industry than the engineers themselves, right? I, I guess, so in the sense is, you know, people might think, okay, you know, I'm choosing this for the next four years of my life. Um, you know, I can, you know, take the pain. I, I, I get the good grades on my courses and, you know, I'm going to have a good life. But the thing is, if you're hating your courses already, when you actually enter and let's say you get a job as a software engineer, you're going to hate your life because you're not doing something you enjoy. Classes are definitely not the same as industry, but they're still based on similar concepts, right? It's just gonna be a little more tweaked and kind of up to date in, in, in kind of the industry way. But nevertheless, you're still gonna be coding, you're gonna be solving the same problems, but just more specialized and, you know, maybe in languages or frameworks that your company uses. But in a sense, it's still the same thing. If you hated your life in college taking CS, you're gonna hate your life you know, when you're actually using CS as your way of life. And kind of the deeper you're in it, the harder it is to kind of break out of it. I hope this video was helpful. And really, I really hope that, you know, in the future, you know, this kind of weird situation that's been going on can change because everyone should have the chance to start off their college experience, you know, with classes they're enjoying, with concepts and ideas, you know, and learn stuff they actually like. You know, and, and when you learn the stuff that you like, it's going to help propel you into the fields that, you know, fit the content that you already were enjoying in college.